Hey friends, what a crazy year we've all been living through. I sure wish I was in England with you guys right now. My heart longs to be back in the South Down Hills. You know, for the last decade, I've been to England at least once a year for David's Tent and Big Church Day Out. And I can't wait till this storm comes to an end and we can all be back together worshiping again. I miss Big Church Day Out so much and the hope and the life that comes when we all come together and lift our voice. And I wanted to take a couple minutes and share some thoughts with you guys. I've been praying for you guys this week. And one of the things that's been coming to my heart is the power of learning to sing through the middle of a storm. Um, we've all been walking through a storm. There's been so much pain. There's been so many unanswered prayers. Um, and there's also been hope rising. And I will never forget this story I heard about John Wesley. And he was actually on a boat from America back to England. And he's on this boat and then this boat hits this massive storm. And the storm is so bad that the sailors, these ones who sailed back and forth across the Atlantic, they are cursing God because they, they see no hope to get through this storm. And as they're in the middle of this storm, John Wesley is hearing these sailors curse God. And all of a sudden on the other side of the boat, he hears a group of people singing in the middle of the storm. And he goes and finds these people and it's a group of Moravians and they're singing in the middle of the storm. And he's completely astonished that they could have hope in such dire circumstances. And he grabs one of the Moravians and he says, how could you sing in the middle of the storm? We're about to all die. And the Moravian looks in John Wesley's eyes and he says, don't you know that sudden death is sudden glory? And that moment changed John Wesley's life forever. And so what I wanted to share with you guys is to encourage you and, and bring um, some fresh hope to sing in the middle of the storm. I love the story of Jehoshaphat. They're also in these dire circumstances where they're surrounded by enemies. They're in the middle of this impossible storm where they don't see any way out. And it's in 2 Chronicles uh, 2, uh, chapter 20. And they have this moment where in desperation, they begin to cling to the king in the middle of the storm. And they come up with this crazy battle plan to send out their worshipers in front of the army. And there's this audacious faith that if they trust in the Lord and they lift their voices in song, that God will fight for them. And listen to this in uh, verse 20. Jehoshaphat says, listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And as they begin to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against their enemies. What a stunning moment. And you know, a couple years ago, me and Melissa got news. It was a, like a week before Christmas. One of our dearest friends, their little boy, Jackson, two years old, um, is being airlifted to the hospital. And uh, the doctor says, unless there's a miracle, Jackson's not gonna make it. His body was shutting down and we just went into prayer. We went. Uh, it became this chain of prayer across the whole world. We began to pray for this little boy, Jackson. It was a couple days of just battling for his life. And I'll never forget, uh, late one night, we got a text from Jackson's dad. And he said, the doctor just came in and said, there's no way Jackson will make it through the night unless there's a miracle. And I remember me and Melissa just held each other and began to cry. And I felt the unbelief that death's going to win this one. Jackson's going to die. Uh, and I felt that heaviness that comes when you're in a storm like this. And as I felt the heaviness, all of a sudden I felt this glimmer of hope begin to rise in me. And as we were weeping and feeling the pain of the storm all around us, I just began to sing this really simple phrase. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. And it was like I had this face off with this giant of unbelief. And there was this one voice that's saying, Jackson's going to die. You're not going to make it through the storm. And I felt this other glimmer of hope begin to rise in me that we are going to see the king defeat death. 
And that night, me and Melissa began to write the song. We sent it over to Joel, uh, Jackson's father, and he took the song um, with his iPhone. And it was just this broken, rough, raw prayer of, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies. And Joel would take the song and hold it with his iPhone over Jackson's little body. And over the next few days, Jackson began to recover. And two weeks later, he was uh, led out of the hospital and the doctors were gasping at uh, the miracle that happened in Jackson's body. We got to record the song several months later. And as we released the song, um, we released the story about Jackson and his healing. And what happened is this song started this avalanche of hope where other kids, uh, we begin to get these testimonies of other children facing impossible situations and using this song as this weapon of praise, this weapon of hope as they were walking through storms. Kids who were fighting cancer, um, different circumstances of just impossibilities where families were facing, heartbreaking stories, and this song became this weapon of hope. And I wanted to close by sharing with you guys this crazy testimony we got last year with this song, I Raise a Hallelujah. And it came from a family who was on the coast of North Carolina. They were on family vacation and um, they're all at the beach one afternoon. They have several children. The kids are out swimming in the water and they had a 10 year old boy named Levi. The parents are on the beach enjoying vacation, enjoying the sun, the wind and the waves. And all of a sudden they look out into the water and Levi's gone. And they start looking around and suddenly they see Levi's body floating on top of the water. One of the scariest moments I can't even imagine as a parent, the father runs out, pulls Levi onto shore and he is completely blue, no breath, no pulse. Um, they don't know how long he's been underwater without breath. And um, there were actually nurses on the beach that were on vacation, saw the situation, they run down, they start to give Levi CPR, and five minutes goes by with no pulse, 10 minutes goes by, no pulse. Um, an ambulance is on its way, but they're on a remote beach, so it's gonna take a while for the ambulance to get there. And as the parents are um, just weeping and crying, Levi's little sister, who was actually a pretty quiet little girl, comes over and she begins to sing over Levi. I raise a hallelujah, I raise a hallelujah. And Levi's mom says, sing it louder, sing it louder. And some of Levi's cousins are at the beach on vacation. They begin to come over. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. And they're singing over this little boy who has no pulse, no breath. And as they begin to sing, the nurses all of a sudden go, he has a pulse, he has a pulse. And at that moment, the ambulance pulls in. Now he hasn't had breath or oxygen for over 10 minutes at this point. And so they put him in the uh, ambulance. They rush him to the hospital. As they get to the hospital, they do all the tests. There's no brain damage. Levi is completely back to normal. And so uh, what a story, what a testimony. And I wanna just bless you guys that as we're all walking through this storm together, that um, you would sing in the middle of the storm. So I'm gonna see in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise